Thank you for watching the Tank Museum's YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe. If you can support the museum, please think of backing us on Patreon or joining one of our membership schemes. Or if you watch to the end of this video, you'll be able to see how you can help the museum by buying items from our online shop. This is a ferret scout car. It's actually, I don't know, it's a, it's a, we'll, we'll call it a Mark II because it's got a turret on it. Normally they were the two stroke three when they were used in service, but um, there's so many designations that it confuses you anyway. Now we've actually got quite a lot of ferrets in the collection, both in this hall and in the other um, parts of the museum. And we're going to have a look at one shortly, which is cut away completely so we can see how it works. You do need to do that with the ferret more probably than any other vehicle. There are also ones taking part in the arena displays that we have outside. Sometimes Mark IIs like this fitted with the new machine gun. We have also the guided weapons versions, which really work very well, but which are going to be the subject of a separate tank chat later on. Weighs about four to five tonnes in many cases, which isn't bad. It's of all welded construction. Armour on the front, about 16 millimetres thick which is enough to keep out small arms, but no more. It's designed for stealth, that's the whole point of this. It travels quietly, it's powered by a Rolls-Royce six-cylinder engine, it's a six-in-line water-cooled engine in the back. It was actually used in different sizes for different vehicles in the range. Really became the standard issue for military vehicles for a while with the British Army. But they soon stopped that when they realised that it was a lot cheaper to buy them from anywhere else. But otherwise quite an effective little vehicle. Driving through four-wheel drive down here. And it's driving through a five-speed pre-selector gearbox. Now this means that you can select the first five, the five gears all the way up the range and reverse separately. So you can, in theory, go in reverse flat out, which is quite a remarkable thing. It's actually quite a nippy machine in many ways. They do, oh, on a good day, about 45 miles an hour, which isn't bad, but I wouldn't want to travel in reverse at 45 miles an hour. I think you're asking for trouble. But as a means of getting out of trouble, quite effective in its own way. You'd have to give the driver a bit of a view backwards as well, which you can do by opening windows at the back. But that's what's needed in, in a reconnaissance vehicle that relies as much as anything else on its relatively low profile and stealth to creep into action rather than go blasting in and fight its way forward for the information. It has a crew of two, the driver who obviously sits in the front and you'd have a commander in this turret. The turret's got 360 degree traverse but it's done manually, it doesn't know mechanical aids at all. The commander normally has the lid open, the back folded down, and sits on the back so that he's half out. And he would do that when he wasn't in action because it is a bit claustrophobic inside. The rather crammed full of stuff and everyone's wedged into position and that's it. It's armed with a single 30 caliber Browning machine gun. Some of the later ones are actually fit in with the GPMG, the British machine gun. But this is dates from a slightly earlier period. It is, as you see, in United Nations colours. They were used like this in Cyprus and to some extent in certain parts of Africa. And they were painted white because that was the UN colour for vehicles. And that's why the helmets are blue. It's all they were all the men were known as the Blue Helmets who served with the um, United Nations. So that's why it's painted in this unusual colour scheme. It's got smoke dischargers at the front. It's got quite large flaps at the side and at the front for giving the driver a good view, both forward and both sides, which are designed to be closed down when it's under fire and fitted with a periscope. It's got run flat tyres, which will still hold up when they're punctured so quite why it carries a spare i don't know there's no real need you can usually manage without but um this version and the mark one carried a spare on this location here it's not entirely necessary 
and I don't think it was used very often, but that's what it's for. Now this is the, the Ferret Scout car. It's actually been sectioned by the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers and repainted so that you can see what the interior layout is, what all the mechanical bits and pieces do. And we'll come to them in a minute. But I wanted this really, first of all, to show as an example of a Ferret Mark I, which was the original Ferret. It was an open-topped vehicle. We haven't got one at the moment, so we have to make do with this. It had a crew of three, where you had two in a normal Ferret. You had the driver sitting in the front here and two seats behind him for the two other occupants of the ferret. That's the basic difference in a Mark I and a Mark II, was the presence of the turret or not. If you look at this thing, you can see that the driver sits down here and he's got a steering wheel which is upside down compared with what you're used to in a car. It does take a wee bit of getting used to, but it steers like a normal vehicle. Otherwise, it's done so that it can take advantage of the slope of the front of the hull of the car. On the right, you've got the five-speed gear selector, which you put in gear and then press a clutch pedal, or what, what, what um, I call a clutch pedal, they don't, which changes gear for you. And on the other side, you've got the forward reverse lever. Now, everything that's in here that serves a function has been painted a different color. The engine and all the automotive parts are in duck egg blue. This was the colour normally they were painted in anyway. So that you can follow the, from the engine, which is a six cylinder Rolls Royce engine, through the pre selector gearbox to the drive shafts to each wheel station, fore and aft. That's how it worked. The other um, colours donate different aspects of the interior. Everything that's painted orange is connected with the electrical system. Everything that's painted blue, like the radiator here, is connected with the, the cooling system. Everything that's painted brown is connected inside with the exhaust system and outside with the suspension system. So you've got, you've got the exhaust pipe on the outside there as well. And the fan is painted brown. Yellow covers the oil cooler and all things associated with it. So that's what the colours are for. That's why they're all slightly different. They didn't paint the batteries black. They've always been black. It's four-wheel drive, as I said with the earlier one. But you can actually see now how the wishbones work up and down on the suspension, how the springs bear on them here on both sides. And that, that gives you some idea of how the four-wheel drive works. There's an escape door on the left, normally actually covered by a spare wheel, but in this case it's been removed and you can see how the escape door works. There's one on this side as well, which are there to, for, for blokes to wriggle out in a hurry if they're under fire, but otherwise they, they're never used. These two items across here, the black bars, are not part of the vehicle. They're there to hold the thing together, to stop it falling apart. I don't think it would because it's properly welded, but uh, they like to be on the safe side. But that's really what this vehicle is all about, why the interior is laid out as it is. And it gives you some idea of how all ferrets look inside. But this really does serve both as an example of a Mark I and as a marvellous exhibit from the point of view of how the vehicle works. So there we have a, a ferret, really it's probably drivable, but um, not that anyone would want to drive it like this, but there you are. If you're interested in British post-war vehicles like the ferret, have a look at our online shop. There's a range of models there for sale and some very good publications as well. Things like these Tankergrad publications, which have got excellent captions, good colour sections, and here this particular one, for example, on the Berlin Brigade, showing all that Berlin camouflage, that remarkable scheme that was put on the vehicles stationed in Berlin. We've also got, if you happen to be XBAOR and you served on a Saracen, there's your Saracen manual. These are the original handbooks here and uh, beautifully illustrated, telling you how to operate and maintain your vehicle. And of course, in our Haynes series, we've got a number of the Cold War vehicles. We've got Chieftain, this is a Challenger 1 and we go on to Challenger 2 as well. So have a look there 
and uh, fill your boots for Christmas. We have a fantastic selection of books, models, clothes and other gifts on the Tank Museum online shop. When you buy from our online shop, you are supporting the Tank Museum charity and that means we can carry on caring for our collection and producing this content. If you have supported us already, thank you very much. Subscribe and do keep watching.